Have you heard of Jane's Retina? Unless you are big into the homebrew floppy disk game scene in the 80s, specifically in San Francisco and the surrounding Central California regions, it is unlikely you've heard of it, let alone played it. While unconfirmed, it is generally believed that the game was created as part of an anonymous art project and was secretly distributed by the artist or art team to see what would happen. People who claim to have owned a copy of Jane's Retina all agree that theirs has a number handwritten on the disc in white marker, likely for the creator's identification. The highest number confirmed is 210. The game starts as a simple title screen with the names of the creators, John Doe and Alan Smith, the years 1986 and the company Cornea Integrated Associates. The only sound is a dull single note drone that some players didn't notice, perhaps because the note was usually quiet. The only sound is a dull single note drone that some players didn't notice, perhaps because the note was unusually quiet or they had their sound turned down too far to hear it. Of course, the most striking thing about the opening title is the image that takes up the full screen. A somewhat grainy picture of what appears to be a human eyeball, complete with long optic nerves trailing behind it, resting on a blue surgical napkin. The eyeball had been extracted with great care, with no damage taken to the fragile nerve endings which are spread out on the napkin to show their size and complexity. As the optical nerve attaches at the back of the brain above the cerebellum, there is no way to perform a surgery like this without killing the patient unless the patient was already dead upon extraction. The eyeball, which was brown and adult size, given the presence of the bloody scalpel, had been screwed on the tip of the scalpel so that it is pointing towards the camera while still giving a view of the length of the optical nerve. People who have recreated the title screen photo by drawing it from memory I pointed out that the placement of the pupil to the way the nerve is curled and frayed on the napkin and angle of the scalpel seem to follow the golden spatial ratio, meaning that someone worked very hard to position the photograph in, a, in just a specific way to their liking. Something that many who have studied the game point out in the sheer amount of work taken to create the photo. Someone went to a great deal of effort to find a body, find a surgeon with immense skill to remove the eyeball without damaging a single nerve ending, and position the slippery organ by piercing it with the object of its removal to an artistically pleasing ratio must have had this image in mind for a very long time. This was not taken by an amateur photographer, but by someone who studied the craft and possibly had a career in the trade. Once choosing new game option, which is the only option on the title screen, the title screen disappears with a spatial wipe and then the new image arrives with the same style of wipe revealing an another slightly grainy photograph. This time of a woman, presumably Jane, from the game's title, from the neck up. Players report that the way the photo is taken is in itself unnerving. The bottom of the frame does not include the outward curves of his shoulders, giving the optical illusion that her neck is far longer than it should be. Players describe the woman as in her mid to late 30s, with perm dark brown hair that extends below the frame. They say she looks to be Hispanic or possibly multiracial, but as the photo was grainy, it is difficult to tell. She faces a camera, looking directly into the lens. Players describe her expression as calm and controlled, similar to a driver's license or passport photo. They all describe a strong sense of intelligence in her face, as though she wasn't just posing for a photo, but looking directly at the players behind the screen. The background in the same shade of blue from the surgical napkin on the title screen. There are only two options, closer and stop. Choosing stop closes the game and sends you back to your desktop. Choosing closer focuses the camera about half an inch or so closer to the face. This is not immediately apparent, 
As the distance move it is so small, it looks like we're just getting the same picture each time the button is pressed, not becoming noticeable until the 12 fish or so click. Rapid clicking is not possible as the button remains indented for about 10 seconds before becoming available again. Every time the player clicks closer, the camera moves the same distance. This is not simply enlarging the photo, we are actually getting a new photograph each time, as players point out by how the woman's eyes adjust focus on the camera each new, at each new distance. After clicking closer, roughly 200 times, we see that the camera is aiming for the woman's left eye. By this time, at least 30 minutes of clicking have been performed. Many people who have played the game have given up out of boredom at this point. By an additional 20 minutes, the blue background can no longer be seen, with the woman's face and hair taking up the entirety of the screen. By another 10 minutes, only her face is visible, continuing the calm expression. After a combined hour, only her left eye is visible, staring directly into the camera. It is here that some remaining players say they quit the game, as the camera was so close to her eye that it seemed absurd that the closer button was still available. Remembering the shock image of the severed eyeball from the title screen, they stopped the game for not wanting to see what happens any further. The ones who persisted, either from curiosity or from not wanting to admit they wasted an hour of their day, say the camera continues to the surface of her eye. Although there is no obvious change in camera, the image now gives the impression that we have entered the woman's eyeball and are seeing the interior surface of the ball with pink veins branching from the retina. Continuing to push closer takes the player through the eyeball and to what appears to be the optic nerve in its socket. Though given that all surfaces are pink, it's hard to tell. This would be a simple illu enough illusion with modern graphics, but in 1986, practical effects must have been used, making the passage from the exterior to the interior all the more impressive. A, a small endoscopic camera must have been used to get the effects, though such technology was difficult to access in 1986. Where and how the makers of the game received an endoscopic camera is yet another mystery. The closer button is still available, leading the player to follow the optic nerve through the skull and under the surface of the brain. Some players say this moment, as opposed to what they've seen previously, is what made them physically ill. To eventually reach where the nerves fray and fan out into the optical lobes, players who have studied pictures of this part of the brain afterwards point out that the entire journey must have been performed on a living person or at least one that had died very, very recently, as there is no graying or discoloration at all in the tissue. It's at this point, having reached the occipital lobes, where the closer button vanishes. A new button appears on the opposite side of the stop option, reading further. The rules for the further option seem to be the same as those for the closer option as it can only be clicked once every 10 seconds but the distance between clicks is significantly longer. The first click sends the player back several inches to where the eyeball had once been, now a red but carefully clean eye socket. Another click brings you to see both the socket and the other eye. The third click shows us her full face, though the calm intelligent expression is now no longer present. The fourth click is a return to the shot of her face, hair and neck, her skin toned shallow and jaw slacked in depth. The fifth click takes us further back, further than the opening image, showing that her head had been severed right below where the initial picture had cut, showing a small stain of blood on the blue background behind her. The sixth click shows her head alone on the many blue surgical napkins. At this point, the further button option disappears, with only the stop button being available. Given the way her hair is hanging from her scalp, there is no way the head is lying down on a, on a surface 
with the camera suspended above. Players of the game have tried recreating the image by having a long haired person lie on their back and take a photo from above versus having them stand and take the photo from straight on. The hair would be spread out at least a little, leading players to believe that the head was somehow suspended against a wall of, of napkins. The creators of Jane's retina have never come forward, likely out of fear knowing that they would undoubtedly be arrested. The woman in the game has never been identified, though several missing persons cases have been applied as possible leads. The most haunting aspect of the game, which all players have completely agreed on, is whether or not the woman knew she was going to die. Her expression is either that of someone who believes she is only participating in a harmless art project or is someone absolutely at peace with her fate.